So you want to buy a house here in Georgia, but have no idea how the actual purchasing process works here. Well, buckle up and let's dive right in. Hi, I'm Sarah Mislowski, a real estate agent helping clients from all over the world relocate here to the Northeast Metro Atlanta area. And I explain this process on average about five times a week or so. So I thought I would give you the full rundown of exactly what the transaction process looks like right here in Georgia. What better place to start than at the very beginning? So you've decided you're going to move to Georgia, whether it be by choice or out of necessity. The very first step is a two-parter. You're going to need to get connected to a lender to know what you could afford and identify where you want to be. Those two things go hand in hand here in Georgia because your budget was likely going to dictate the areas that you are going to be looking in and where you should be browsing. So once you've reached out to me and said, hey, I'm moving to Georgia in two months, what do I do? I'm going to get you connected to my local lender so we can figure out exactly what price point we should be looking at. If you are paying cash, we can skip that step, obviously. But if you've been previously pre-approved with a big national bank, I am going to highly, highly recommend you get connected with one of my excellent local lenders. I could spend an hour giving you a list of all the reasons it's better to work with a local lender and you're just going to have to take my word for it. I can share those horror stories later. If you want the long answer, you can check out this video where I give a more in-depth evaluation and explanation, kind of comparing what it looks like to use a national lender versus a local lender. So now that you're pre-approved, we can begin to focus on what areas might work best for you. You may have seen all of my videos about how great Alpharetta is, but if you get pre-approved and you can't spend anything more than $350,000 and you insist on having a one acre piece of land and a fenced in backyard, well, you aren't going to be able to find what you're looking for in Alpharetta. Trust me, I would live there too if I could afford that and get to that in Alpharetta. We are going to hash out all of your wants and your needs and what you're willing and able to spend, and that will really help us uncover what areas you can explore. If you have to be in a specific area for your job, this will obviously simplify the part of the process for us. Now, one really important thing to note is that we do not want to begin searching for homes or physically looking at homes until we know exactly what you can afford. If you insist on looking at homes before you know how much you can spend, and then you find out that at $200,000 out of your price range, but you've already fallen in love with the home, it's going to be so challenging not to be disappointed by the homes that are in your price point. Also, if you aren't physically moving to the area for several more months looking at specific listings it's not a great idea because oftentimes people will find a home that they just absolutely love but they can't move yet so then once it's time to actually shop all they can think about is that one house they saw months ago on an exploratory trip and that house is long gone and again this doesn't make for a great shopping experience okay so now we know where you want to be we know how much you can spend now it's time for the really fun part and that's when we actually start to look at houses I find that it typically takes a few weeks to find the perfect property. Now, this is going to be a different timeline if you're buying new construction. If you'd like to see a whole video about the timeline of new construction, leave me a comment below. We're going to go out and look at properties that fit your criteria, and once we found the perfect one, we're going to write an offer for the home. This is basically a document that has all of our terms written out that we present to the seller and see if we're in agreement. This is going to be where we decide all of our important dates, and timelines, offer price, and any contingencies we may need. The first part we will discuss for your offer is the price. If a home was just put on the market and has a lot of interest, which by the way, it's still a thing that's going on here in North Georgia, it would not likely be at our best interest to write an offer that is significantly under list price. Now, if the home has been on the market for three months with no offers, well, this is a scenario where we could come in under list price and there's more room for negotiation. It is important that you lean in and trust your agent, which is hopefully me, when discussing pricing. We're going to pull comparable homes in the same area that have sold within the last three months to make sure that that home is listed at an accurate price. Once we determine whether the home is listed at the right number or if the market is saying it's 
too high since it sat for a while with no offers, this will be the first part of our offer. The next step is deciding how long our due diligence period will be. Now, back when things were insane during the pandemic, people were waiving the due diligence time period. And this is a time period during the transaction that you can back out for any reason at all and still get your earnest money back. Now, speaking of earnest money, it is typically around 1% of the purchase price. This is negotiable, so it can't be more or less than that amount, but this money is used to basically give you skin in the game and show that you're committed to buying the home. If you're very interested in a home and there's also lots of others who feel the same way and they're also putting in offers, one thing that you can do to make your offer more competitive is having a shorter due diligence period, which shows a seller that you are committed to making this home yours, or you can consider putting down a higher amount of earnest money. Right now, the sweet spot for due diligence is right between five to 10 days. Once your contract is accepted, this due diligence time period begins and we have that amount of time to do any inspections to make sure the house is in good shape. We will recommend a great home inspector who can come out and look at every foot of the house from top to bottom and point out any potential issues or damages. If they see something, for example, with a foundation that they think might be a concern or the possibility of mold, or perhaps the roof looks a little questionable, we can then call a specialist for those items and have them take a closer look to determine if there is a problem that needs immediate repair, or if it's just something to keep an eye on. Now, like I mentioned, your home inspector is going to take a very, very thorough look at the entire house and point out all the good and the bad. So don't be shocked when you get a very lengthy report back. This does not mean that the house is in disarray. They're just simply pointing out all the pertinent details, like the age of your hot water heater and HVAC system. They're checking every outlet in the house to make sure it works, opening up every window. So naturally, it's going to be quite the laundry list of information they send back. Many times people who live out of state will fly or drive in during their due diligence period if they have found the house virtually. That way they can see it in person and make sure they still love it just as much as they did. This due diligence period gives us time for this and it allows time for all of the inspections. Now, once we get all the reports back, we are going to go over them together and see if there are any items we want the seller to have taken care of. Or if we would rather ask for money and closing costs so that you can can have these items taken care of yourself. Let's say we do get the inspection reports back and there are an overwhelming amount of major concerns with the house that you are just not interested in dealing with. You are 100% free to walk away from the home at this point and not give up that earnest money that you turned in at the beginning of the contract. This due diligence period is the only time that you will have to walk away from your home for any reason without penalty. Something I've been asked in the past is, can we just go ahead and have a home inspection before we move forward with putting in an offer. And while yes, technically you could do this with the seller's permission, and I would never recommend it. If you don't have an agreement in writing that you're going to purchase this home, there is nothing stopping someone else from coming in and making an offer on the exact same house and going under contract on it at the same time that you just spent $500 for a home inspection on it for nothing. Again, there's nothing stopping you from canceling when you have an agreement with a due diligence period. So there's really no risk to moving forward with an offer if you were seriously interested in a home. So after we decide how long we're going to ask for in the due diligence period to get all those inspections taken care of, we're also going to come up with our closing date. Now, a standard home purchase with a loan in Georgia takes about 30 days. If you're paying cash and you don't need a loan, this can be cut down to as little as 14 days, even sooner. Of course, the closing date has to also work for the seller. So if a house you are purchasing is slap full of stuff and the sellers are moving across the country, they may need a little bit of a longer closing to help get them prepared. We will work with the seller's agent to come up with a timeline that can work with everyone. Usually the standard 30 day closing works really well for most, but sometimes we come across some sellers that need 45 days instead, or if the house is vacant and you're paying cash, we can usually make these shorter timelines work just fine. One thing to note about Georgia is that once you've gone to your closing and you sign that paperwork, the house is yours that same day. We exchange the keys at closing. There is no marinating period like there is in California. The house is yours. Closing has to be held on a weekday and it cannot be on a holiday because the lender will not be able to approve the release of your funds to the attorney's office. So that is something to keep in mind when it comes to scheduling closing. So we 
have the price, the due diligence period, and the closing date of the contract figured out. Next up, we're going to figure out how long you're going to need for your financing and appraisal contingency. Now, just like a short due diligence period, these timelines were waived in many transactions during the pandemic. But luckily, they are back on the table. When you obtain a loan to purchase a house, these are two contingency dates that act as a safety net to make sure that you can actually qualify for a loan for the house and to make sure that the bank agrees that the house is worth whatever price you're paying for it. A financial contingency is what protects you in case a lender finds out that you can't actually afford to purchase the home or if something were to come up that wouldn't allow you to be able to afford a mortgage payment anymore, like losing your job or not getting a commitment letter from a employer that you previously anticipated. The standard financial contingency these days is typically between 18 to 21 days. Now, if you are using one of my awesome preferred lenders, they're going to make sure you are financially solid before we move forward with making an offer on a home. So this is typically something we can keep even shorter than that. There's also an appraisal contingency, which protects you in case the home does not appraise for the price that you are under contract for. Essentially, the bank has to have your home appraised to make sure that they are not lending you over and beyond what they see the home to be worth. If you thought the home was well worth beyond what the bank thought it was worth, then you're going to have to make up that difference in price and cash. And the reason for this is because you can only get a loan for the amount that the house appraises for. What this means with an appraisal contingency is that you have time to have an appraisal ordered by the lender, and then they're going to come out to the house and come up with a value that they see best fits the house based on all of its characteristics, its location, and the homes that have sold similar to it within a closed proximity. Once we get the appraisal report in, we're going to look at it and see if it came in at value, which means it's the, at the same price that we are under contract for, or if you're lucky, it comes in higher. Both of these are best case scenarios. However, sometimes it comes in below what price that is on the contract that we've come to terms with. When you have an appraisal contingency, you have a few options if this comes back low. You can either walk away from the home and not lose your earnest money and say, okay, we're out, this didn't appraise, or you can negotiate with the seller to potentially either split the difference in the appraisal price and the contract price, or the seller could agree to lower the contract price to meet what came back on the appraisal. Now, if the seller is unwilling to do this and you personally think that the house is worth the additional money, then you could pay out of pocket for that. So say your appraisal came in $20,000 less than the purchase price you have on the contract. You either have to hope that the seller will reduce the contract price by $10,000 and meet in the middle, or you can walk away and find something new, or the seller could reduce the price of the house by $20,000, or you could pay that additional $20,000 dollar gap. Knock on wood though, since homes aren't being grossly overpriced and people aren't paying so high over asking, we haven't seen major gaps between contracted sales price and the appraisal price. In fact, I haven't seen one at all in the past six months. Something that used to be very common and then kind of disappeared in the craziness of the last few years is a home to sell contingency. Many times people have to sell their house in order to obtain a loan to buy a new one. They simply can't carry two houses at once. I can't. So what we can do is we can create what we call a home to sell contingency. This means that the purchase of your home here in Georgia is contingent where it depends on you being able to sell your house wherever you are currently living. And having this contingency allows you to cancel your purchase here if you are unable to sell your current home. Unless you are in an area where we know your house will sell the minute it is placed on the market, we are going to line things up so that you can have time to market your home and get an offer on it so that it's a surefire thing before we get our hearts set on something here that we might not be able to get if there isn't any interest in your house. Something that you often find in these contingencies is what's called a kickout clause. A kickout clause is essentially a piece of protection for the seller. A house with a home to sell contingency is still marketed as available. When a seller receives a non-contingent offer, meaning someone comes along and says, hey, I can buy this home right now. I don't have a house to sell. First, in order to make that happen, the seller will go back to you and say, hey, 
we just got an offer and it's not contingent on anything. Then you as the buyer who has that contingency with the kickout clause in place, you must decide whether to proceed without the contingency or walk away from the purchase. Meaning you would have to remove that it being contingent on the sale of your home. Now, buyers typically have a small window of time, usually anywhere between 24 to 48 hours where they have to decide if they're going to walk away or stick to the contract and give up that right to walk away if their home doesn't sell without penalty. Now, if something does go wrong with the home you're selling and you can't make it work out and that kickout clause has been activated, the worst case scenario is you could terminate, but you are losing your earnest money. And that will be given to the seller basically to say, hey, sorry, we took your home off the market for so long. Here's money for your time and for taking it off the market. So once all of these terms have been negotiated and all parties have signed, whoop, you are now officially under contract. This starts all of these important dates and deadlines, and we pay very close attention to these dates to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Don't stress yourself too much about these deadlines. It's my job and my fantastic team's job as your agent to make sure that everything is on schedule, and I will be following up with you and the lender and the closing attorney to make sure that everything is on target. Typically, the first week of being under contract is the busiest, and then once we get through due diligence, we've overcome most of the biggest hurdles and we're just waiting on that appraisal to come back. Your lender and closing attorney will be working closely behind the scenes to make sure everything on their end is taken care of and they're going to tell you the amount of money you need to wire over for the closing. This is your down payment, rated property taxes, HOA fees, lender fees, taxes, a whole host of things. So a day or two before your closing date, you're going to wire those funds over so that they have plenty of time to arrive. Then come closing day. So on closing day or the evening before, we are going to go through a final walkthrough of the house that you were buying before we close on it to make sure that everything is still in the same condition as it was when you first saw it. That way we can make sure that no one accidentally put a massive hole into the wall as they were moving that big couch out of the way. Once we have laid eyes on the house, we are going to head to our appointment at the closing attorney's office and there you're going to spend about an hour signing documents. These documents are uploaded while we're sitting at the closing table, sent over to the lender so they can make sure everything is right. And they're going to say, looks great. You signed in all the spots. We're going to give you funding approval. This means they tell the attorney that they can release the money that you wired to the seller and the additional money that the lender has wired and the house is all yours. Super quick and easy, right? I know after all of these explanations, it can seem like a very daunting process, but that is why you have to hire an amazing agent who is going to hold your hand every step of the way. Of course, if you're moving here to Georgia, I want to be this person for you. You can find my contact information below this video and make sure you also check out this video about the home buying process.